Welcome back everyone. Today we have another abstract looking at. This will be a pretty short and simple video. Uh, just to give how you can use simple objects to create much better looking renders. So I'm going to go into my poly modeling and select any primitive that I want. I'm going to go with cylinder and let's dive in. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the cylinder and reduce the amount of subdivision to maybe like somewhere about 12. That should work and also remove the caps. Alright, so I'm going to scale this up. This is not exactly the modeling thing, just to add a bit more dynamic into the scene, I'm going to just add a few things and let's make the subdivision height to 2. That way we have one edge in the middle, just to separate this cylinder. Alright, so from here I'm going to go into the face, I'm going to select top and bottom face and I'm going to add some bevel here. Let's reduce the fraction amount to maybe like 1 and uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Apart from that, I'm going to select this face again and simply let's extrude this and extrude this inside. I'm hitting Ctrl E as my hotkey and Ctrl E again and extrude this inside. And from here, I'm going to just remove it. Uh, I'm going to bring this close and add some bit more subdivision. All right, so I'm going to turn off the grid. You can also hit extrude from here. So this is what we have and if I hit 3 we have something like this. So I'm going to add a bit more hard edges to this. So I'm going to select this edge, this edge and let's hit bevel. Make sure the fraction is somewhere about 1 and add a bit more segments to this, maybe around 3. Alright. So I'm going to add an edge loop right about there. Okay. And one edge loop, sorry, right about there. Okay. This looks good. So let's see if we have sharper edges or not. Yes, we do around here and here. We do have to fix one thing, which is the top part. So I'm going to add one edge loop around here and one around here and one in the middle. I'm going to do the same with this. Let's add about here, here and one in the middle. All right, perfect. So let's uh, bevel these edges as well. I'm going to bevel this. Make sure your fraction is set to 0.1 and segments to about 3. There you go. Alright, so once you have something like this, what else you can do from here is add a bit more edges into this. So I'm going to go for this good object mode, insert edge loop. You can also find the insert edge loop around here and add a bit more edges here. From here, you can just play around with this. If you want to add a bit more room into this, you can extrude this if you want or something like this. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to select this edge right here and I'm going to hit bevel edge and reduce the fraction. And I can see the bevel. I'm going to go to object mode, select the edge again, click on bevel. Yeah. So 0.1 seems good. Add a bit more segment here, that's it. And I'm going to select this face and this face. And I'm going to extrude this inside. There you go. So we have a pretty nice extrusion going on. I'm going to select this edge, all the edges. This one, this one, this one. Inside as well. And I'm going to simply hit bevel. Make sure the fraction is set to point one and increase the segment to about three. All right, so we have something like this now and just so it has some supporting edges going on, I'm going to add some support about here, here and here. All right, that's it. All right, so this is what we have. Now we are going to separate, uh, not exactly separate the model, but the shading part. So what I'm going to do is select the face, go to the front view, Select the top face and I'm going to add a new material to this. This will be my, let's say, glossy material. And we'll make it somewhere about 20% black. We'll make the metallic to about 0.5. Let's make it 0.6 maybe. I will keep the overall roughness to maybe like 0.2. Alright, so from here with this face selector, what you can do is simply hit Ctrl Shift I to invert the selection and we have the bottom part and now you can right click and assign new material and let's take another and we'll call this material a mat. 
we are gonna make this point twenty percent zero to zero black we'll make the metallic to about five as well but we'll also make the roughness to five as well all right now with this the rest is only few things left which is adding an emissive material so i'm going to go to my face mode select this face hold shift select this face and you have this rim i'm going to do the same with the bottom part and now we have this face is selected right click new material shader stand surface let's call this emissive so here you can do a simple thing which you can take an incandescent bulb replace this and here uh, in the emission you can simply change the color to somewhere about here maybe all right so we have something like this now looks pretty good to me let's see how we have this in the ipr all right so we can see the emissive material but not as good as we thought so i'm gonna add a bit more emission into this maybe like around three yes and obviously we don't have any light in our scene so if i were to take any light maybe a directional light we can see how our material looks so it looks pretty good the matte and gloss it looks pretty amazing and uh, from here we can just mask this so i'm going to close this first and let's go to our mash network let's mask this now we have something like this let's go to the repro and make sure we are using our gpu and in the distribute I'm gonna simply switch to grid and uh, let's take a second grid on top and let's distribute this quickly okay with this selected let's go to the mesh and add a random node let's randomize the whole position and some rotation as well and with the uniform scale selected we are going to change the scale by 0 0.1 which is just to add a bit more variation into the scene so i'm gonna make the overall position z depth to about maybe like 15 and from here if you don't like this look you can randomize the seed to get a desired look you want i'm gonna take a simple camera here just so we have a nice setup going on and uh, let's make it 45 get into our camera let's bring this back and bring this up to about maybe like Eight and bring this close now six all right so um, I'm gonna hit yes three on my keyboard and yes don't ask again and with this selected let's go to the mash again and uh, in the random I'm gonna see which uh, type of displacement I actually want all right all right this looks good so I'm going to get into my film gate first to see if it fits my scene or not. All right. Yeah, this looks good to me. So I can select uh, pretty much any cylinder here I want and I can use that as my depth of field as well. So I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to create a new locator. Bring this up. Let's go to our perspective view. And uh, from here, we can get back into our camera and see if this one is exactly what we want bring this back all right perfect so with the camera selected you can click on this icon to get into your camera and simply copy tab once you have the copy tab you'll have this new window bring this down and from here what you can do is select the locator and here you will see distance from camera if you don't have this you can simply go to display it's a display and i think it's called object details or a poly count maybe one of these i'm gonna get into arnold and i'm gonna say enable depth of field i'm not gonna turn this on right away i'm just gonna put in the value just in case i'm i want to use the depth of field and there you go so with this we don't need this locator anymore we can delete this and i'm gonna lock my camera here let's go to the ipr again turn the ipr on we have something like this now just to add a few lighting scene i'm gonna take a simple hdr here and i'm gonna load in one of my hdr from my own 
pack if you want this it will be in the description if you don't have any hdr you can simply go to google and find tons of free hdr as well apart from this i will be showing you how to do a manual lighting in this scene as well so don't worry about it all right so i've loaded in my hdr i'm using stripes for my hdr pack i'm gonna add some more diffuse samples here and turn off the camera let's bring this out mm, let's scale this up all right so this looks pretty good to me i'm gonna select my hdr quickly and add a bit more exposure to this now this looks pretty good to me again if you want you can change the scene uh, anytime you want you can simply go into the mesh and change anything that you don't like I'm going to add the depth of field to see how this looks. Let's increase the aperture size. Some more. And now here you can see the depth of field kind of working it out. And we have nice depth of field going on around here as well. You can see our focused object. And this looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to keep the aperture size to 1 and apart from that if you don't like the overall scene i can rotate my hdr to get a different kind of style as well so i'm gonna decrease the intensity and let's get into the manual lighting so for the manual lighting you can also do as you can simply take a uh, directional light apart from that you can also go for arnold's area light i'm gonna scale this up hit j on a keyboard and rotate this and bring this back and we have something like this setup let's go to our ipr and i'm going to increase some exposure here until i see anything maybe like eight all right i can see something all right let's add a bit more diffuse and specular here let's add a few samples let's make the overall roundness and soft edge to one and one as well let's get into our camera and now you have some so just one area light and you'll have much more better looking scene as well so i think if you think the depth of field is a bit too much which i think it is you can simply reduce it by going to the arnold and making it maybe like 0.6 all right so this was it it was a pretty small short video if you didn't understand anything make sure you go back and watch it again it was a pretty simple tutorial and just a fun way to create some amazing stuff if you are getting bored or something so have fun with this. Uh, if you come up with something, share with me. I love to see your work. And that's it for today. And I'll see you in the next video.